So I kind of think of nucleophile like a nuclear missile. It needs to be long and thin, no sex jokes. Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be going over substitution reactions, which you can probably guess from the title. But um, some of you might be thinking this video is too simple or too basic and you guys are just going to skip to the next video, but I highly encourage you guys just to stay tuned and um, watch what I have to say. It's only going to be for a couple of minutes and I don't want you guys to miss out on anything I explain here because if you watch the next video, some stuff might not make sense because I'll reference back to here. But um, anyway, for uh, SN2 reactions and SN1 reactions, when I first took Orgo, and I think many of you guys are thinking the same thing, when you first took Orgo, right, SN2 reactions and SN1 reactions, they're not that complicated by themselves, but it's when your professor starts teaching you guys E2 and E1 reactions, and then you guys work with situations where it could be any of the four, or maybe you guys are just given a situation like this, and your professor wants you to, to distinguish, is it E2, E1, SN2, SN1? So on a test, it can get kind of confusing, right? I don't know if it's the case for you guys, but when this happens, I'm kind of like, ah, oh, what the heck is happening? So many freaking options, you know? So, uh, yeah, maybe this is just me. I don't know. So the whole point of this video is so that you guys don't have to go through what I went through and you guys will be able to distinguish each very easily. I'm going to try and go over some really, really key factors that distinguish SN2, SN1, E2, and E1. And hopefully after watching my uh, video series on these couple of reactions, you guys will be able to distinguish them nice and easy and ace your exam. Okay, so let's get started. Well, for SN2 reactions and SN1 reactions, I think the most important key factor that you have to look for is the nucleophile. In case you guys are wondering what a nucleophile is, it's basically the molecule that's going to be doing the substitution. Your nucleophile is something that's going to attack a substrate, in this case it's this molecule here, and kick out the leaving group. For our purposes, it's the halide bromine. Now, for SN2 reactions, you're going to be working with a strong nucleophile. In our case here, it's methoxide. It's called methoxide because of the CH3 here, which is a methyl group, and then the oxygen here, so oxide. So when you put it together, methoxide. And then methoxide, you know it's a strong nucleophile, and you can do this for other nucleophiles as well, is if it has a negative charge, chances are it's going to be a strong nucleophile. Because what the negative charge is telling you is that this oxygen here, it's not stable, it has extra electrons. That makes it more reactive, and, and then oxygen is more willing to attack uh, attack other molecules like this one here and donate electrons and form that bond between them. And then if you take a look at SN1, the key factor is that instead of a strong nucleophile, you have a weak nucleophile now. If you take a look at our, our nucleophile here, right, can you try and guess the name? Well, it's methanol actually. And the reason is because this is a methyl group and this is an alcohol group, alcohol functional group, so methanol. But as you can see, this methanol, it doesn't have a negative charge like methoxide, so it makes it much more of a stable molecule, and it doesn't have ex extra electrons to donate to other molecules like this one. And so it's not willing to attack, and if it's not willing to attack, it's not going to be a strong nucleophile, hence weak nucleophile. So next, okay. another thing that's very important is that for SN2 and SN1, it doesn't matter which one, whether you're a strong or weak nucleophile. In order to be a nucleophile in the first place, you have to be not chunky, which is just a simpler way of explaining unhindered, which I'm sure you guys have probably heard in class. But if you take a look at this molecule here, it's called terbutoxide. Don't worry too much about the name right now, I'll explain it later in my elimination videos. But terbutoxide is really, really good for elimination. I'll just write that in here, E. And it's also um, very good for E2 specifically because it's a very strong base. But um, terbutox terbutoxide, right, it's very, very chunky, so kind of pretend like this is terbutoxide. Pretend like my finger here is the, I guess, the negative O. And you see how like there's these extra CH3 groups here that kind of make it really chunky? Well, these CH3 groups here, they make it really, they, they slow down the molecule a lot when it attacks. And also, it's hard to substitute in to a molecule if you're really chunky because there's going to be a lot of clashing between all the molecules. So your terbutoxide is basically a pretty crappy nucleophile 
and, and it's basically not even a nucleophile at all. So it's really good for E2 reactions where you're eliminating things. If you don't know what, what that means, don't worry about it, but it's going to be pretty bad for SN2 or SN1 reactions. And this molecule here is terpenal, don't worry about it. Good for E1 reactions. I'll explain the, both of these later, but I just wanted you guys to know that if you see these two guys, chances are it's probably not going to be a substitution reaction because they can't get into the molecule. Okay, so now I want to tell you guys about an analogy that I use to remember what a nucleophile is. So I kind of think of nucleophile like a nuclear missile. It needs to be long and thin, no sex jokes, but um, yeah, it needs to be long and thin like methoxide here. It can't be really chunky like terbutoxide because then your missile doesn't fly fast and it's not really good at hitting something. So, uh, and also a nuclear missile is meant to attack. So then that's exactly what your, ter what your um, methoxide does. In this case here, methanol, even though it's not charged, it's still a pretty good nucleophile because it's long and skinny. <laughs> but yeah. So how was that? Did you guys find it helpful? Hope you guys weren't too focused on counting the number of times I said so that you guys weren't even paying attention to the video because that kind of this defeats the whole purpose. But uh, yeah, make sure you check out my next video. Everything gets much more better from now on. Uh, it's more interactive and I try to make it a little bit more interesting. So yeah, check it out. Bye.